concerns about market manipulation continue. And here to tell us how, to what extent, and really fill us in is Michael Maloney. He's founder of GoldSilver.com and author of Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. It's part of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series. And first of all, we're thrilled to have you in our L.A. studio to talk about this. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Lauren. Absolutely. Now, this is something we've heard very often. This is something that data covers a lot, and that's the manipulation of gold and silver prices. And we know that markets really have been manipulated kind of since the beginning of time. So I guess the question isn't if the gold and silver market is being manipulated. It's really to what extent, and does this affect prices and investors in a way that's material? Well, it affects everybody. Uh, the common man isn't really feeling it yet, but the, the main thing is all manipulations eventually fail. When you try and suppress the price on something, uh, it becomes less profitable, profitable to produce over time. And then uh, shortages develop because there's less and less production, less companies producing that product. Once shortages develop, eventually the free market will overwhelm the manipulation and the price uh, suddenly spikes. Now, gold and silver are the canaries in the coal mine. They are the alarm bells mm -hmm. that signal whether world central banks are doing a good job of managing their currencies or not. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, as most people know, the Federal Reserve is doing a really poor job of managing the currency. If gold and silver spike, it, it can cause a, financial, a global financial crisis. And <clears throat> so they do try to manage the gold price and manipulate it, and there is a ton of evidence for it. Uh, GATA has been tracking gold mostly. A guy named Theodore Butler has been tracking silver. Uh, there's, what's interesting is anybody that investigates this uh, comes to the conclusion that gold and silver are manipulated. If you dig into it and look at the facts, they come to this conclusion. Anybody that says that in, on the mainstream media is usually dismissed as a lunatic. And the people that dismiss them as lunatics haven't investigated it. There is no investigation mm -hmm. where the conclusion is that gold and silver are trading freely and fairly, that, that, that there is no manipulation. Well, there's nobody that says, I've investigated it, here's all the evidence, and my conclusion is that there's no manipulation. And we're going to get to some of this evidence a little later in the interview because you had some that you, that you shared with us from the Office of the Treasury for South Carolina and their findings. So there is a lot on this. I, I want to get to one thing you touched on before we really get into how this works, which is the government's role. because the London Gold Pool famously worked to manipulate the London gold market back in the 60s to maintain Bretton Woods. So we know for a fact that governments have been involved in this in the past. It's not just private markets. So what evidence do we have? Is there evidence that governments are involved in gold and silver manipulation today? Uh, well, there's uh, a man named Frank Veneroso is a commodities analyst that did a marvelous job of analyzing uh, uh, gold from, I believe, five different, using five different methods coming to the conclusion that the world's central banks had been leasing gold into the markets and it's leased uh, at very, very low interest rates, like one quarter of one percent per year. Uh, and uh, that gets sold into the market and then the bank can use the proceeds to do whatever they want with. Uh, when they lease it and then it gets sold, it's supply into the market that pushes the, the price down. Uh, then Alan Greenspan, in testimony to Congress, and this was buried in his testimony where he was uh, arguing that the uh, over-the-counter derivatives market should not be regulated. So this was his argument to not regulate over-the-counter derivatives. But there was one line in that speech where he said that the world's central banks stand ready to lease gold in increasing quantities should the price of gold rise. Now, the word that lets you know that the manipulation was going on is when he said increasing. I see. Increasing means they're already doing it. Should the price of gold rise means that the target is to keep the price of gold down. So he admitted in testimony to Congress that they were manipulating gold. So the Federal Reserve is part of the, only part of the equation. Part of the uh, equation. There so are let's... some large uh, banks and so on that are involved in this also. And let's get into that and how that works. Because let's take an example. J.P. Morgan has really become the poster child in the financial blogosphere, at least, of manipulation in this silver market. And from what I understand, the essence of how this works is that uh, basically J.P. Morgan floods the market with a bunch of sell orders. 
uh, regardless of their physical position. Uh, in essence, it would be above and beyond their physical position. And this is known as naked shorting for, for uh, those who want the technical term. And then this drives down the price. And then that's when they go in and really can buy. It's kind of the opposite of a pump and dump scheme, I guess you could say. First, is this accurate? Well, it, yes, it's accurate. And you can see um, uh, some of the evidence in uh, the way things trade. Uh, first of all, these large entities, these brokerage houses, have uh, trading platforms where they can see all of the sell stops, the offers to sell should a price drop to a certain point. And traders will, will place these sell stops to protect themselves. They, they want to make sure that they don't experience a certain amount of loss. They're willing to take X amount of risk and at that point they want out. And so they place this sell stop that's an automatic uh, trigger and uh, it's at a, a certain price and uh, we tend to act like herding animals. We all sort of think the same. And what you see is if you, if you look at these uh, trading platforms where you can see all of these sell offers is that there's clusters of them, huge clusters, because we tend to think sort of around round numbers. So we'll place something at a at thousand dollars or nine hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, and then uh, uh, just as an example and uh, also support resistance lines. Uh, previous peaks or previous bottoms uh, will place these sell stops at those support and resistance lines. When an entity can see all of those and they've got the deep pockets to be able to sell as much gold and silver as they want because when they trade gold and silver, they're not trading gold and silver. They're trading IOUs for gold and silver. They're known as futures contracts and it's basically just IOU silver and you sell that <laughs> into right. the market. Right. They can sell tons and tons and tons of silver and they can do it in milliseconds. Uh, they can also put in a sell order and then and cause the price to start to drop and then cancel the sell order. And once it's triggered other people's sell stops, there's a cascading effect. The, the price drops because of all of those uh, sales and it blows the next set of sell stops and the price drops further and it blows the next set and the price drops further. Uh, so uh, it's basically uh, the big banks and brokerage houses that have insider information being able to game the system. Well, and I, I want to talk a little bit about when they do this trading or at least what this shows because there's a great chart that you have that shows the difference and I want to bring it up. This is with the gold market of the difference in how much you would make on gold depending on when you traded it, okay? And it's the difference in making a lot of money, making a little money, or losing money. What does this tell you about manipulation and, and who and when traders are buying and selling? Well, this shows that there is a manipulation, it's, and it's very clear. Uh, the green line in the middle represents the entire precious metals bull market. Gold rose from 250 bucks an ounce, roughly, up to 1900 bucks an ounce it's around 1650 or something like that today uh, and what this is showing is that if you had put a million dollars into gold and just bought and held you would have 6.6 .6 million dollars today uh, now the red line is if you went long you bought gold at the open of new york trading hours when the commodities exchange is open in new york and then you closed your position every evening. You would have lost 70%. Your million dollars in, in, a, in a time period where gold went up more than 500%, your million dollars, you would have lost 70% of it. It would be down to 300,000. Now, <clears throat> what happens is in the overnight market, the overseas trading that goes on in the rest of the world, gold will rise uh, on most nights and uh, make up all of the losses and then some. This is what uh, the reason that there are gains over the past 10 years. The overnight market makes up for the manipulation that happens uh, during the, uh, the New York trading hours. That's really interesting. Mike, I want to ask you. If they sell a whole bunch of futures contracts or uh, place a, a gigantic order, during New York trading hours, that's when most of the trading is going on in the world. Okay. And if they cause a sudden price drop, it scares people out of the market. 
and it, it, it sort of manages the gold price up slowly. Now, those same entities, once the gold price has dropped, they can buy back in the overnight market very slowly. Instead of dumping a whole bunch of contracts onto the market at the same time, they can buy back very slowly, not causing a price spike, but a very, very slow rise. And basically, they get to fleece the public. The top line, the blue line, is your gains if you were to be short gold during, the, you know, betting that the price of gold is going down during New York hours, and then long gold during the rest of the world's trading hours. That's and really that interesting, means Mike. We have, uh, that's really returns close to five thousand percent. Wow, that's really interesting. Everything that you just pointed out. And when we get back from a break, I want to play you what J.P. Morgan says about these allegations. You could say, and I want to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the evidence we referred to earlier in the show. We will be back after a break with more with Mike Maloney, author and founder of GoldSilver.com. Welcome back. We're talking gold and silver market manipulation. And before the break, we brought up JP Morgan as kind of the poster child for silver market manipulation in particular. And Blythe Masters, the head of global commodities for JP Morgan, was asked about this concern about their metals and specifically silver positions. And this is how she defended it. Often when uh, customers have that metal stored in our facilities, they hedge it on a forward basis through JP Morgan, uh, who in turn hedges itself in the commodity markets. If you see only the hedges mm -hmm. and our activity in the futures market, but you aren't aware of the underlying client position that we're hedging, then it would suggest inaccurately that we're running a large directional position. So that's the official defense. Let's bring Mike Maloney back into the conversation to see if he believes that it holds weight. Again, he's founder of GoldSilver.com, also an author. And Mike, she says essentially J.P. Morgan is hedging its position, hedging its physical holdings of silver. Is that legitimate? Uh, to some extent, it is legitimate. But, you know, <laughs> J.P. Morgan at, at times, uh, this, these positions can be up to 25, 30 percent of the uh, entire uh, futures market, the, the uh, entire uh, above ground silver that is being hedged in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, do you really believe that JP Morgan, that there's all those customers, a third of the world's silver customers are having JP uh, Morgan store their silver for them and do their hedging, and then uh, <clears throat> that all those customers are going to do synchronous trading? Uh, with, with this shorting and so on, where they all acquire silver at the same time. And I mean, it's, it's a good speech, and she needed, needed to address this because what is happening is the more this story gets out, uh, the more people sort of get on this bandwagon and want uh, uh, proof or they want this to end. Now, it is illegal, and, and if, it, if the allegations are true, it's a crime in progress. Uh, but uh, uh, personally, I sort of like it. It gives me <laughs> the opportunity and my customers the opportunity to buy gold and silver at artificially suppressed prices. Well, that I was think the silver would be uh, far higher than it is today if uh, the price had never been manipulated. And so the manipulation offers an opportunity for people to protect themselves. And it offers us uh, the opportunity to get more gold and silver into the hands of the middle class. Uh, as the middle class goes, so goes the country. The middle class defines a country with its vote. And when the middle class gets wiped out, those people get scared and they're likely to vote for anybody. That is where Hitler came from. Well, uh, and that's, that's uh, a bleak prediction. I want to ask about that, though, because one of the, you said that this is an opportunity, so that's a question I wanted to get to, because the Office of the State Treasurer of South Carolina did a study, and in it, they found exactly what we're talking about. They said that similar to commodities, the value of gold and silver is determined by supply and demand as well as speculation, and they basically identified uh, J.P. Morgan, the London Bullion Market Asso Association, the Federal Reserve, HSBC Holdings, 
holdings for practicing fractional reserve banking and engaging in naked short selling, causing artificial price suppression of gold and silver. So the finding of their report, because they were looking at investing in gold and silver, was that it wasn't a good use of taxpayer money. It wasn't a good idea because of the market manipulation. But is this the wrong conclusion? Because as you said, this is an opportunity. And is, the op is it just telling us basically buy physical gold and silver as opposed to getting into these kind of speculative schemes? Yeah, this, this uh, story was uh, broken by my, uh, one of my staff, uh, Christian Garcia. And uh, it's the first government admission that there is a manipulation of the precious metals going on. So this is great to have the government finally coming out and saying that, yes, this is happening. But the really dumb thing was they were saying the price has, is being suppressed, so we're not going to invest in it. It's, it's dangerous. Well, if the price is being suppressed when they lose control, which direction is the price going to go? It's going to go up. And they always, every manipulation that has ever occurred throughout history ends someday. And uh, this will end, and the price will go up. Uh, but uh, what, what their conclusion was, that they're going to go with the safe bet and buy more IOUs, more uh, U.S. bonds, more foreign bonds, <laughs> just any type of debt. So they decided to invest in debt. I prefer an asset that is no one else's liability, an asset that has intrinsic value versus uh, somebody saying, I'll pay you someday. Yeah, and that's kind of the point of gold. So I guess my final question, because we just have a minute, is what is the impact of these paper gold products? One example is an ETF, an exchange-traded fund. Is there enough physical gold to back up these IOUs? Well, you know, uh, you were talking earlier about uh, the, or Jeff Christian was stating that uh, gold is leveraged 100 to 1. Uh, that means there's 100 people that think that they can lay claim to the same ounce of gold. The thing is, there's somebody, you know, this is a giant game of musical chairs, and there's 99 people dancing around the room, and there's one chair, and there's already one guy sitting in it. He's the guy that's got his physical gold. He already <laughs> owns it. And when the music stops, everybody thinks that they own that ounce of gold, but this guy's already got his hands on it, and he's sitting down. <laughs> so just to confirm so, that the message uh, I get is this I, is a the, Ponzi scheme, and own physical gold is the answer to it. That's what I believe, yes. It's a giant Ponzi scheme, and it's engineered for the big banks, the big entities, to basically shear the public. Except now they're doing, an, an, the, the, the saying in the financial industry is shear, don't slaughter. You don't want to slaughter your client. You want them coming back to you so you can shear them regularly and make a profit on them. Well, now they're doing high-frequency shearing. Ah, high frequency sharing, but you're onto it and you're finding a way for average folks to benefit. I appreciate you being on the show and explaining how this all works. It's been a very popular topic that our viewers have all been asking for. Thanks so much. That was Mike Maloney, author and founder of goldsilver.com. So this was his argument to not regulate over-the-counter derivatives. But there was one line in that speech where he said that the world's central banks stand ready to lease gold in increasing quantities should the price of gold rise. Now, the word that lets you know that the manipulation was going on is when he said increasing. I see. Increasing means they're already doing it. Should the price of gold rise means that the target is to keep the price of gold down. So he admitted in testimony to Congress that they were manipulating gold. So the Federal Reserve is part of the, only part of the equation. Part of the uh, equation. There so are let's... some large uh, banks and so on that are involved in this also. And let's get into that and how that works. Because let's take an example. J.P. Morgan has really become the poster child in the financial blogosphere, at least, of manipulation in the silver market. And from what I understand, the essence of how this works is that uh, basically J.P. Morgan floods the market with a bunch of sell orders. Uh, regardless of their physical position, uh, in essence, it would be above and beyond their physical position. And this is known as naked shorting for, for uh, those who want the technical term. And then this drives down the price, and then that's when they go in and really can buy. It's kind of the opposite of a pump and dump scheme, I guess you could say. First, is this accurate? Well, it, yes, it's accurate, and you can see... Um 
their findings. So there is a lot on this. I, I want to get to one thing you touched on before we really get into how this works, which is the government's role, because the London Gold Pool famously worked to manipulate the London gold market back in the 60s to maintain Bretton Woods. So we know for a fact that governments have been involved in this in the past. It's not just private markets. So what evidence do we have? Is there evidence that governments are involved in gold and silver manipulation today? Uh, well, there's uh, a man named Frank Veneroso is a commodities analyst that did a marvelous job of analyzing uh, uh, gold from, I believe, five different, using five different methods coming to the conclusion that the world's central banks had been leasing gold into the markets and it's leased uh, at very, very low interest rates, like one quarter of one percent per year. Uh, and uh, that gets sold into the market and then the bank can use the proceeds to do whatever they want with. Uh, when they, they lease it and then it gets sold, it's supply into the market that pushes the, the price down. Uh, then Alan Greenspan, in testimony to Congress, and this was buried in his testimony where he was uh, arguing that the uh, over-the-counter derivatives market should not be regulated. Concerns about market manipulation continue and here to tell us how, to what extent, and really fill us in is Michael Maloney. He's founder of GoldSilver.com and author of Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. It's part of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series and first of all we're thrilled to have you in our LA studio to talk about this. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Lauren. Absolutely. Now, this is something we've heard very often. This is something that data covers a lot, and that's the manipulation of gold and silver prices. And we know that markets really have been manipulated kind of since the beginning of time. So I guess the question isn't if the gold and silver market is being manipulated. It's really to what extent, and does this affect prices and investors in a way that's material? Well, it affects everybody. Uh, the common man isn't really feeling it yet, but the, the main thing is all manipulations eventually fail. When you try and suppress the price on something, uh, it becomes less profitable, profitable to produce over time. And then uh, shortages develop because there's less and less production, less companies producing that product. Once shortages develop, eventually the free market will overwhelm the manipulation and the price uh, suddenly spikes. Now, gold and silver, are the, uh, some of the evidence in uh, the way things trade. Uh, first of all, these large entities, these brokerage houses, have uh, trading platforms where they can see all of the sell stops, the offers to sell should a price drop to a certain point. And traders will, will place these sell stops to protect themselves. They, they want to make sure that they don't experience a certain amount of loss. They're willing to take X amount of risk and at that point they want out. And so they place this sell stop that's an automatic uh, trigger and uh, it's at a, a certain price and uh, we tend to act like herding animals. We all sort of think the same. And what you see is if you, if you look at these uh, trading platforms where you can see all of these sell offers is that there's clusters of them, huge clusters, because we tend to think sort of around round numbers. So we'll place something at a $1,000 at $1, or $990. Uh, and then, uh, uh, just as an example, and uh, also support resistance lines, uh, previous peaks or previous bottoms. Uh, we'll place these sell stops at those support and canaries in the coal mine. They are the alarm bells mm -hmm. that signal whether world central banks are doing a good job of managing their currencies or not. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, as most people know, the Federal Reserve is doing a really poor job of managing the currency. If gold and silver spike, it, it can cause a financial, a global financial crisis. And <clears throat> so, they do try to manage the gold price and manipulate it, and there is a ton of evidence for it. Uh, GATA has been tracking gold mostly. A guy named Theodore Butler has been tracking silver. Uh, there's, what's interesting is anybody that investigates this uh, comes to the conclusion that gold and silver are manipulated. If you dig into it and look at the facts, they come to this conclusion. 
Anybody that says that in, on the mainstream media is usually dismissed as a lunatic. And the people that dismiss them as lunatics haven't investigated it. There is no investigation mm -hmm. where the conclusion is that gold and silver are trading freely and fairly, that, that, that there is no manipulation. Well, there's nobody that says, I've investigated it, here's all the evidence, and my conclusion is that there's no manipulation. And we're going to get to some of this evidence a little later in the interview because you had some that you, that you shared with us from the Office of the Treasury for South Carolina.